G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Marble Mountain. I have another long episode today, mostly because I don't know when to stop building <laughs> at the moment. I've just been building like crazy, uh, mostly because I am really enjoying working in Marble Mountain lately. The projects we've been doing have been super fun and this is just another one where I've just really enjoyed building. Probably could have been two episodes, but I decided just to make it the one. So enjoy it. We will also do a live play at the end of the episode, around the 25 minute mark. So if you want a bit of a recap uh, of everything we do, then that'll be at that time. So today's episode is all about Marble Mountain Zoo. We um, are finally placing down this asset or this collection, this pack, however you like to call it. I actually haven't really used the zoo um, at all. Uh, in this game. Actually, the only time I've used the uh, the zoo component of the game was when I did the build competition, uh, the global build off, and that was like a year and a half ago. So that's the last time I used it, and I didn't really use it properly. So it was actually really fun getting into this and exploring all the different assets and different parts of the whole zoo collection, which is um, actually pretty huge, the amount of stuff you can do and how, um, how detailed you can get with um, the type of zoos you create. Uh, so I do create a fairly detailed looking zoo and uh, I guess like the main the main thing the, the main things that I wanted to cover with the zoo was I wanted it to feel really quite realistic and I also wanted it to function like a zoo so I wanted to get a crowd I wanted to get um, a bit of a profit happening uh, that doesn't really happen <laughs> unfortunately uh, and I'll talk about that I'll talk more about that in the live play but Basically, I really struggle to get people to actually come to the zoo um, and make a profit. Though the design aspect of the zoo I think is on point. I really like how everything turns out and I like what I end up building. Just need to get some people coming in. So we'll have to work on that um, a little bit later on down the track. So apart from people actually coming in to visit the zoo, the zoo itself turns out fairly realistic and I was basing it off San Diego Zoo um, in California but mostly just in the beginning because I was planning on this zoo to be on a pretty steep gradient uh, though I end up making it somewhat flattish which was um, a much easier way of uh, tackling the project. Mostly because the types of habitat to get and the enclosures uh, they require a fairly flat type of land. Uh, you can get away with some things by um, placing down a lot of trees, which is a general tactic when it comes to building some uh, this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I had to sort of level out the land just a, a bit because uh, I was finding it really, really tricky. What I started off with is the main parking lot for the zoo and I wanted there to be a fair amount of parking because like I said, this is going to be the main zoo of Marble Mountain so we're going to get a lot of people, um, theoretically we'll get a lot of people to come to the zoo. And um, I also wanted to include some sort of drop off zone or some sort of bus parking zone. So I ended up creating that by using the avenue and um, just connecting it up to just two main streets or just two streets. And that was a really simple way of doing that. It's probably um, could use a bit more work, but decided to just leave it the way it is. I thought it was um, still quite nice, just the way it looks. And uh, just to align it up and just to make it look a little bit more seamless, I decided to paint down or just put down a couple of decals just so the lines match up a little bit easier. Uh, I also used some um, bus and taxi decals too, just so that you can sort of see where the buses and the taxis would go to, um, you know, that'd be more of like a dedicated area. Uh, for drop-offs, we end up do we end up placing down a bus uh, bus line. This is like the first bus line we play, we um, actually use in Marble Mountain. So uh, yeah, that was kind of cool. It um, goes from the downtown to the zoo. It was just one of my ways of trying to get people to actually come to the zoo in the first place. It sort of works. It sort of doesn't. I'll talk more about that later on. Um, so you can tell that I am not using the standard entrance for the zoo. Uh, mostly because I just it, that doesn't feel very um, I don't know it just doesn't feel very authentic it doesn't feel too much like a normal zoo entrance so I decided to use the I'm pretty sure it's the amphibian habitat and it's like this really old building I thought that felt more like a zoo than the actual um, the zoo entrance itself and I ended up using the zoo entrance uh, as the drive-through entrance, um, like the main gates as you come into the parking lot. 
Uh, that way people are still entering th into the zoo and when um, when it comes to walking inside the zoo then they actually use the um, the amphibian uh, entrance which I think looks far better. The cool thing is that people actually go through that entrance so it's not just like you know they get there and they can't move uh, it is an actual physical entrance they can actually walk in which uh, works out quite well. Uh, something that I'm also doing is just to cover up a couple of the kind of less nice looking pieces that come with these vanilla assets. I decided to just drag some of the uh, concrete networks and uh, by doing that you can create uh, pretty decent looking planters and a bit more custom which is also nice rather than just being um, like rectangular ones or you saw me use the flower uh, beds but they just didn't really match very well because I think they're you know you can you can tell that I've just sort of popped them down and haven't put too much thought process in, into it um, whereas when you use the the networks and create more custom unique looking ones I just think it adds a lot more so I ended up using that technique which I've used a couple of times but I think these ones probably turn out the best and then um, you can also use these clusters of bush I think they're ground covers or I, can't, I can never remember the name of them but they were introduced within the uh, park life DLC and they work really nicely just to cover up some uh, different aspects of you know ugliness I guess and I decided to um, raise them up a bit so that they sort of poke over the edge of the garden beds which you quite often see with uh, these sort of garden beds and um, they work so well um, particularly because you can get some really small ones and it just like the only limitation I guess by doing that is that you don't um, you don't have as much control because those those sort of um, those clusters are they sort of come in a couple of different sizes and if you make anything too small then they would be too big to um, actually fit inside so you have to make it somewhat large-ish and that way when you raise them up most of those corners get covered up which works quite well to the side of the entrance I also decided to place down a couple of little shops I thought that might be a good spot for maybe some bathrooms and some um, and some places to eat or like a little cafe or like a souvenir shop there's generally some sort of uh, shopping facility out the front of the entrance so I thought that would be a good spot that's always my technique when it comes to uh, building theme parks or zoos or whatever uh, I was actually using a lot of ideas that the, well, at least the same sort of techniques that I would use if I was playing Planet Zoo or Parkitect which I have also been really enjoying lately so it was actually kind of fun using the same sort of skills in this game which was kind of strange it's like a really weird crossover because usually you don't get that sort of crossover uh, because yeah I'm like equally obsessed with uh, theme parks as I am with cities Hence the reason why I am also playing Parkitect and Planet Zoo. I have thought about getting into uh, Planet Coaster, especially now that I am playing Planet Zoo, but it's just it's a little bit too intimidating at this stage. Plus, I don't think I'd have the time for it. Um, otherwise, I'd be all over that game. I still probably watch a lot of um, a lot of people play it, so that's that's sort of um, quenching my thirst for that game. But yeah, if I had more time, I'd definitely be playing that. Now we are finally inside the zoo and my build style inside here was I thought I wanted to keep things somewhat uh, feeling a little bit old because um, I figured this zoo had probably been around for a while uh, particularly with an entrance like that that is a fairly old looking entrance I'd say you know 100 years old or something like that it's uh, very old architecture and I thought if there was a building that looked like that I would have thought that this zoo had probably been around for quite a while and because of that I thought we'd have some of the more older style buildings, some of the more older style habitat um, in this sort of area. I also didn't want anything to um, like A-list attractions or A-list uh, animals in this area so we ended up placing down a bird cage and I think we have the antelopes as well. Um, I just sort of thought that if people are going to go see the elephants or the giraffes or anything like that then they'd have to sort of branch out a little bit further into the zoo. Uh, so I thought that would be sort of like the main idea going into the entrance. I was also sort of thinking not to try and make this place look too nice, <laughs> you know, because I, I sort of feel like with sometimes when you go to zoos, they, um, you know, they can be a bit like, oh, this is sort of a bit outdated or this probably could use a bit of a spruce up. 
And I also think that that's the sort of technique you have to take sometimes because uh, you, you might be a little bit, well I was a little bit limited with the sort of assets I could use, being in Marble Mountain there's not really any big fountains I could use or um, any nice looking statues. I probably could have grabbed a couple of things from the workshop but being just like a standalone build I thought you know what I might just leave it the way it is. So it's probably not the best looking zoo at this stage but there are some aspects that do look quite nice and I, I think what does really go for this zoo is that it is really um there's like a lot of bush there's a lot of trees uh it's very nice in terms of like the paths that I end up creating and uh it's not just like a typical grid like pattern either you can sort of tell that I am um sort of branching away from that which is kind of tricky in a zoo because uh, the sort of habitats you get are very um, rectangular and they don't really match very nicely when you are building on some sort of steep gradient or if you are trying to, um, you know, get away from that grid-like pattern. So you can also see that I'm not really working with a um, typical uh, square or rectangle block of land. It is um, a bit more of a triangle which is a bit tricky to play with but I think that is a bit more uh, interesting makes for more interesting looking um, creations I think uh, because of that I end up sort of placing each habitat on a different angle and I uh, figured because I'm gonna place down a whole bunch of trees which is my idea going into it I thought that would be fine because a lot of those corners would be covered up and they really do they really get quite covered up I'm also quite lucky because zoos are very foliage heavy. There's a lot of trees within zoos. Um, pretty much every zoo that I was flying over wasn't just San Diego Zoo. I was also looking at Taronga Zoo in Sydney. Um, I was also looking at the zoo in San Francisco. They all are just like covered in trees, which is really nice. Almost to the point where you can't even see where the habitats are. So I figured that would be a really nice touch just by um, making sure there's like a lot of foliage, a lot of tree cover. It also just helps just to cover up those places where sort of just can't be bothered <laughs> no not not can't be bothered uh places where i just thought you know what that's enough time that's enough effort on that one location place down a couple of trees you can't even tell the difference that's sort of my technique when it comes to building in this game oh i really like this area so this area is probably one of my favorite spots in the zoo this is an area that i decided to create into a bit of a pit stop or an area where you'd um stop and have lunch or buy something or um, go to the bathroom uh, so I thought I'd make it into like a bit more of a tiered plaza sort of area and um, the way that I've done that is there's this quite nice plaza that comes with the zoo and I've just raised it up and because there is this raised area I um, decided just for that area that is below it that looked a bit too strange just having that big concrete wall that the um, plaza created uh, I ended up just splicing in a couple of different buildings so you saw that I think there's a bathroom and a cafe in there but um, it looks more like a bathroom block even though there's some tables there too. Uh, but I just thought that that worked quite nicely just to um, create a little bit of difference and also it placing down buildings like that, they make the land a lot flatter. So you can actually create some really sharp looking angles just by um, splicing in a couple of buildings or even using those plazas, they work quite well. Um, the path system in this zoo, so what I wanted uh, so I wanted it, like I said, I wanted it to be very realistic and I thought there would um, be like all these pathways, like quite wide pathways for guests, but there'd also be back lots for the staff as well. Um, and it's really cool because you see a lot of people using these pathways and you see some um, people using their backstage areas too, um, and they're actual just guests who are using those backstage areas, but they, um, yeah, it looks really quite cool when, the, when it starts coming a little bit more alive. Though, in saying that, I am not getting the amount of guests that I think I should be getting in this zoo, which is a real pain because, I, you know, the whole point of building something like this is so that you see lots of people walking around and so it feels alive. You get a few people here and there, but it's not to the extent that I want. So, I would love your ideas. I do go more into this more in detail in the live play, but if you have any ideas about how I can get more people into the zoo, please hit me up because... The way that I like to play this game is that I like to see places coming alive, a bit of realism. I like to see, I like to know that people are actually accessing and using the places um, that I'm building. Uh, you can actually see some monkeys and some animals every now and again just wandering back to their habitats that I've just dragged away from um, the original locations. There's a lot of dragging, a lot of replacing, a lot of 
figuring out where things are going because um yeah didn't really come together it wasn't as smooth as just placing things down uh, because there's a lot of um a lot of trial and error when it comes to placing down the types of habitats and also because the land itself is not flat I was using a lot of the habitats to sort of manage the landscape a bit more so that they uh, you know terraformed the land for me which is um you know a bit tricky to work with sometimes when it's uh you know you're trying to also squeeze different habitats in particular locations too so like the whole project itself was quite tricky to work with but i am still quite happy with how it all turned out uh it wasn't exactly what i wanted to place in this area to be honest i well to be honest i didn't know what i was going to place here i thought it was just going to be more farmlands but the other week I noticed that people were talking about um, some sort of crossover between Carpa Zoo, which is my Planet Zoo series, and Marble Mountain, and that maybe the animals from Carpa Zoo and Marble Mountain Zoo were being um, transferred between the two while there's some sort of connection there. So I figured that would be a really nice crossover and a zoo is something that I did want to work with in Marble Mountain. I thought that uh, we definitely needed something like this. And this location is probably the best location for it. I actually can't imagine this zoo being anywhere else. M mainly because I don't think it'd fit anywhere else in terms of like the type of uh, areas that we're going to be building in the future. I think it'd have to be pretty close to the actual main city of Marble Mountain. And, you know, in terms of like the t sort of like uh, landscape as well, I think this is like the best location. So worked really well this is like the best spot we could possibly um choose for it oh okay now i'm doing something pretty interesting so because the habitats are all rectangular i really struggled with these gaps that i was getting and i thought it's i could like place down a bunch of trees and that would um you know hide a lot of the imperfections but i also thought that some of these locations would be quite nice to have some sort of more custom habitats so what i'm doing is i'm creating custom habitats for like imaginary animals because there's no animals in these areas so by dragging out these paths they kind of create these really nice raised uh, viewing platforms and then I think what really makes these habitats and what really makes them convincing is by placing down these rocks uh, because quite a lot of habitats do have these rocks for um, you know for animals to hide and for you know placing like enrichment areas that's a term that I discovered from playing Planet Zoo uh, but yeah I just thought that that was um, a nice little touch to the zoo just create a bit more of a difference a little bit more uniqueness to uh, it also meant that I could place down more habitats because we were actually kind of lacking in habitats and Oh, man, I love it. I think it's such an easy technique and obviously there's no animals in there, but not every habitat has to have an animal. Uh, you know, quite often zoos, uh, like habitats will be transitional or some animals might be within their shelters. So I thought it was fine that you couldn't actually see them. Plus, maybe the types of animals within these habitats are really small. <laughs> you know, like maybe they're, uh, I don't know, like a koala or something and they're just hiding, hiding inside a tree or something like that. So I decided to also create a bit more of a uh, main area for the zoo and because I started stretching out the main area I realized that we were running out of space for the zoo so I thought maybe we should actually expand out the zoo as if it was um, expanded out or there was some sort of expansion over time this is like a more of a recent uh, purchase for the zoo and I kind of liked the fact that it uh, there was like a walkway going over the main road or one of the roads uh, within Copper Falls. So that was like a nice little touch and there's a couple of habitats that um, sit over there that we'll detail in a little bit. But for the time being what I'm doing is just working on this um, other uh, plaza. So I think that this is where most people will be hanging out. So this would be where um, some restaurants would be. You'll see that I placed down a plaza too and I've also put down a um, like a little uh, playground. Quite a lot of zoos have playgrounds and yeah, I just think that worked out really nicely. I don't think that's actually part of the zoo collection, but the really nice thing is that you can actually just place down any types of parks within the within any sort of parkland and people will still use it. I also thought that this would be a great location for some sort of uh, really nice looking restaurant, something that was like the main restaurant for the zoo. And I've recently just started using the uh, buildings that came with the 
uh, I think it might be the university pack that King Leto created for uh, Paradox Interactive. It's they're just like amazing buildings. They're really quite fantastic, and this is like a really nice one. It's very g generic as well, so um, I'm pretty sure it is a cafe or like a restaurant um, as part of the DLC. Sorry, as part yeah, as part of the DLC. Yeah, it just works really well. So I just dragged it away from the road and just placed down a couple of extra tables too. Because I, like I said, I wanted it to be a fairly central uh, cafe or restaurant so that a lot of people can access it. And you can probably also see there's a quite a hefty amount of uh, backstage area. Um, again, I wanted this to be really quite realistic. So there is a lot of uh, backstage areas for the zoo. I would think that this particular spot might be some sort of um, animal hospital or uh, you know some sort of clinic and you can also see a warehouse as well. On the other side is probably more administration buildings and I tried to keep them all really close to the main entrance because that's where the main road is to getting into the zoo so uh, I thought that was like a really nice easy touch. And I also really enjoy creating backstage areas. I always really love the difference between what guests can see or what guests are meant to see and then uh, all the backstage areas where only the people who are creating that experience or looking after the animals or, you know, who are part of the uh, workforce within the zoo or theme park. I just really love that aspect of um, zoos and theme parks. I guess they're like pretty much only places that would have backstage areas like that. Uh, but I do really like creating those sort of areas and I think that works really well within this location too. So now we are working on the uh, area that is on the other side of the road. Um, I have to admit, I, I don't do a very good job of this area. I uh, was pretty over it by then. Uh, mostly because I'd already created like 15 habitats and uh, already created like a cafe area and like a restroom area. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to build this one fairly quickly and cover it up with a whole bunch of trees. It's not because I'm lazy, I promise. It's because I'd already built like a whole bunch of them. Uh, plus, you know, I don't think you have to go to too much detail with every single location. Uh, one, you get burnout and, you know, you just lose interest. And two, it also saves... Uh, it just it just means that you can actually move on to other areas and this that's what this was this was like you know what let's just smash this out so we can move on to the next spot if I was to create the same amount of uh, detail work with this area then I probably wouldn't be able to get to anywhere else in saying that I still think this area turned out pretty nice I also created about I think there might be three custom uh, habitats over this site which is uh, yeah I think actually created Probably the most amount of realism and atmosphere within this uh, section of the zoo. So that was like a really uh, nice, easy touch just by placing down rocks and using the uh, different uh, networks to create like borders and fences too. That works out really well. And now the zoo is pretty much finished. I am um, now starting to place down some of the new custom billboards that were created by people um, on my Discord server. A lot of you guys created them, so thank you so much for um, actually designing the images for them. And they were also put together, so the actual props were created by that Evan, who's created a lot of them for me. And yeah, I'll be placing them down a bit more. A um, bit more off camera as well, but I'll be talking more about that in the live play, which is coming up really soon actually. But to finish off the time lapse, we are just creating an entrance, uh, entrance billboard, sorry, for the um, main entrance of the zoo. Very generic, but I think it, I think it's quite nice. And as part of finishing off Copper Falls, I decided to place down a hot air balloon park, which I don't think I do in the time lapse, but you will see it in the live play. Uh, it's, I love it so much. <laughs> I wish I placed it down much early on. It's such a nice looking asset and it's really nice just seeing it floating around uh, in the in this area. It actually takes on quite a big journey. I, I love it so much. I <laughs> really, really enjoyed uh, just watching it float around. So you'll be able to see that as well in the live play too, which is pretty much right now. So let's get into it. All right, dudes, I'm gonna give you a bit of a tour of Marble Mountain Zoo. It is definitely a bustling zoo on the outside, but is it bustling on the inside? Well, it sort of is, but only because I am tricking the system. <laughs> Unfortunately, people aren't technically visiting the zoo, and I'll explain why. And I explained what I did off camera because I've tried a couple of things, and they've sort of worked, but they've 
not really working. Uh, one thing they can see that I've done is that, uh, by the way, I've done a whole bunch of stuff off camera, so you can probably see, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you see all these buses coming in, that was my first attempt to fix the situation. I thought that maybe it was because we had no public transport, so I've dragged a bus network, uh, I've just got one stop here, and then the buses, they travel all the way around here, that's a new road, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, I'm really loving what they're doing around here, that's very fun. Uh, and then there's just the one stop in the downtown of the city, which is in there somewhere. And that's it. That's all I've got. Just to see what would happen. It's sort of happening, but they're not visiting the zoo, unfortunately. We could always do one of these at some stage. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll go down that path at some stage. So another thing that I tried to fix up this situation was I thought that maybe this was the problem because I thought maybe that people aren't actually visiting the zoo because this isn't act you know people aren't actually entering through here so I ended up creating a new entrance nestled inside this building here uh, unfortunately people still are not visiting the zoo so uh, I believe I figured out the problem and I haven't solved it completely yet I think I might do that off camera and you just have to take my word for it. <laughs> uh, basically what's happening is people are sneaking into the zoo. So people aren't actually entering through the main entrance, which is here. They're going through little secret passages. So there's a whole bunch of people sneaking their way up around here. So I just dragged it away to stop them. I think people are still entering through here, even though there's a fence there that has been a little bit, a little bit sketchy. Now I believe they're sneaking in this way. So we might have to fix this up some stage. Uh, I'll probably do that off camera because I really want people to be visiting my zoo. Uh, even though it's just a game and even though people are technically inside, I want them to visit the zoo, damn it. And we'll make it happen. They might also be sneaking in through here, who knows. Anyway, we'll fix that out. We'll fix that up at some stage. For now, I'm really loving the general layout. I'm loving what's going on here. So I'm going to show you, I'll give, I'll give you a little bit of a zoo tour. These guys are doing some pretty sketchy things around here, but just ignore them. The main entrance I'm really loving. I think it's quite grand, quite big, modern with the parking lot. I think that's a nice looking parking lot, but then the actual main entrance, I don't know. I just prefer this house to be a um, much more inviting, authentic zoo entrance than the other one. Uh, we've got some of the custom Marble Mountain billboards, which is just fantastic. Uh, the really cool thing about it is like this, let's get a little bit closer. So that billboard right there is advertising Palm Meadows, which is right next door to the zoo. I just think that's very cool. <laughs> that's why I love doing these billboards. Uh, so we have the main entrance here. This is like the general area where you'd, um, you know, buy some things on the way in or the way out. We then have just some like maintenance areas. I would think that this is for staffing. Um, these are sort of like more, I guess, office blocks. And I, then I think on the other side, this is probably like zoo, um, quarantine areas and um, medical facilities, um, that sort of stuff. I've also put, um, popped in a warehouse because I think they just add a lot in terms of the detail. Um, a lot of backstage stuff around here. So keeping a lot of the backstage around the main entrance, whereas it doesn't really exist anywhere else in the zoo. So you enter in. I actually kind of like what's going on in here now. I think that works. Uh, we now have here the entrance. Well, so that, yeah, it's still the entrance, I guess, uh, where you... I, I would imagine most people will be hanging out, you know, as you can see, it's bustling at the moment. Yep, everyone's having a fantastic time. Damn it. Oh, we'll fix it up. We um, have a couple of different, we've got like a, we've actually got two of the same shops here, but whatever. We also have this uh, cafe, which is spliced into this guy here, which is fine, because I think they, because they're the same theme, they work quite nicely. And um, we've got the main drag. I guess in like two areas. Uh, I guess most people are probably walking down here to follow a bit of a loop. And then I think that the main drag, the main um, area of the zoo is probably here. Um, we've got the elephants. We've got this birdhouse here too. So I think that the elephants in this area, even though there's nothing in here, 
think that like this is sort of like the main attractions and I wanted to keep them somewhat in the heart of the zoo and you know if you can imagine how the zoo sort of expanded over time it probably started off fairly small like that so um, just flying around I, like I really love the general layout of it I think it turned out really nice uh, I particularly like the use of paths just um, you know having some backstage um, ma mainly only for um, staff and I guess maybe some like special tours and stuff uh, but you know I would imagine that this would be all um, off limits to um, people who are um, you know from the general public it's good because nobody's here anyway these, these, like, these rocks I always forget about rocks but they, they add a lot little viewing platform up here I really love this little spot down here so I think that this is probably one of my favorite spots of the zoo and I probably put the most amount of time in here but I just think that it's just very very obscure shapes it's not very traditional and that's what I like about it um, I also try to do like a staircase down this way and then a, um, a sloped area around here just for um, accessibility again staircase slope and then um yeah again backstage stuff sitting backstage these guys aren't I love these guys when I first saw them but now they're just annoying me mainly because they're the only people around <laughs> you know nobody else is here ah so annoying uh something else that I've done that I probably explained in the time lapse are uh, these custom uh more you know uh tailored unique sort of enclosures nothing's in here but you know whatever that's fine maybe it's tiny or hiding underneath the rocks I've kept it pretty generic so pretty much anything could be in this sort of uh, enclosure oh, man I tell you what what were they thinking when they put 15 lines into one area I mean, come on <laughs> nobody wanted that and the amount of elephants as well Ugh, so ridiculous uh, whatever I, I think the animations are, are quite cool like I do Think they've done a good job with these sort of um, animations and what's going on but the amount of elephants really it's a bit crazy so uh, something that I really enjoyed doing was having this um, overpass um, for the zoo as if um, the zoo has expanded over time and look very low detail in this side of things because I was generally pretty over it uh, when I was um, working on this section um, but you know it's still still turn it all right still think it's fine way too many rhinos once again and then that is pretty much the zoo it's quite big but it, I think that's a pretty realistic size for you know if I was gonna build a zoo that's probably about as big as I would go and I wouldn't go any smaller than that either because I think otherwise it wouldn't be very realistic now I've done the rest of Copper Falls and I would I am probably happy to say that Copper Falls is pretty much finished let's change the lighting on that so some things that I've done it are just some very easy farmlands uh, some are actually operational and some are just there for pretendies uh, something that's pretend is this this guy here um, I've got some spawners that spawn in a couple of um, cattle which is I think a nice little touch uh, but yeah that's not really doing anything these guys are these guys are like actual crops and growing um, things for our industry which is great I finally placed down one of these the hot air balloons I think this is like the best spot for a hot air balloon tour I mean you get such a good view of I mean so many different places I mean this guy's taken a nice little um, fly around the national park that we built in the neck in the last episode but um, I've also seen him make his way all the way down to Marble Lake and goes over the farmlands of Copper Falls too which is really cool just got to be careful about going too close to the wind farm I guess uh, but you know just don't doing that little um, you know finishing off it's great I think it adds a lot very low detail you know I think this took me about half an hour it was very quick custom signage that's me it's very nice very nice and again I wanted to like mix in some uh, some farmlands and some houses too so you sort of like a have a bit of a mix wherever you go in Copper Falls you have um, you know just plain old 
farmland and then you have um, you know bits of houses sort of snuck in here too um, this area up here I just thought I'd have some um, you know houses with some big property you know they've got some sort of industry as well this guy just has nothing so I don't know I just I just like that and um, just placing down little bits of industry here and there not really going to too much effort, just um, placing things down, just to see how they look. You know, this is pretty, hello. Uh, that's pretty, um, you know, how's you going, but uh, I think it works. I think it looks kind of cool. And then, that is pretty much it for Copper Falls. It's pretty much done. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I forgot to show you the billboards. Again, we got me. This one's fantastic. So I'm going to be placing these down as we go along in um, Marble Mountain and ah, oh, just notice that. Man, that is so cool. I didn't even notice that before. Ah oh, man, that Evan did such a great job and so did everyone who got involved in the uh, billboard competition or the billboard challenge or whatever you like to call it. Thank you guys for all your submissions. It was um, really fantastic and I look forward to plopping them down later on in Marble Mountain. But guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, then don't forget to leave some feedback or just by writing up the video would help me out a bunch. I think we might ride in one of the balloons. Yeah, this is great. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.